Today we're going to go and have a look at Myosh in general, an overview of how the Myosh Viking platform functions. It's not going to be in depth in any way, but what we'll have a look at is some of the functions in the dashboard, some of the administrative functions, a little bit of the functionality of the individual modules and how they're tied together. So we'll start off really quickly with the dashboard. What you've effectively got is a product that reflects the information held in the records within Myosh in a graphical and visual manner. And you can build the dashboard to suit yourself. The dashboard is fully configurable and it's configurable to the extent that an individual user can configure their own tabs across the top. We can see across here that we've got a number of different tabs. Or an administrator can configure the tabs for other people and make them read only or modify depending on the requirements. And then what you can do in this way is you can also limit people to seeing the data that you want them to see. So without going into a real in-depth look at how the dashboard functions, we'll just look at a couple of things that can be done. I mentioned the tabs across the top and at the end we've got a new tab. So you click on new tab to obviously create a new tab, give it some new name, call it example, and click add new tab. Now what you want to do to this new tab is add in graphs, tables, whatever you like. And down here in the section called add a widget, what you've got is a library of what we refer to as widgets. And all that needs to be done is that you click on the appropriate widget for this particular tab that you've now created. There's a library of up to 70. You can select any combination that you like and you can also build your own graphs. So without going into this in too much detail, if we click on manage widgets what we're able to do is create our own it's a wizard you follow the path of the wizard it takes you through several pre-configured steps and at the end of it you have a graph that is different to any of those that we've configured for you and once you've created this of course what you need to do is save your new creation so down the bottom we'll just save it the dashboard then reconfigures itself and what you now have is the example tab with the next new tab waiting for you to create whenever you want now when it comes to configuration, not only is the dashboard configurable, but the product itself is. And when I refer to the product itself, of course, so what I mean is all of the potential modules that you might have down the left-hand side here. If we go and have a look, let's say at incident reporting, absolutely everything about this view of the data is configurable. Not only is the information about the data in the view configurable, but also the records that make up the view are also configurable. So if we click on new record what we've got is a new incident report made up of a number of sections and here you can see these collapsible sections and the number of sections that make up an incident report is really dependent on your requirements you can decide what fields go into the sections and even how many sections there are as well as who can see the fields and who can see the sections in what workflow step so it might be that you've decided that in, that in a particular workflow step a particular section containing information that is only pertinent to an injury manager should only be seen by injury managers and nobody else and this is something that you can set up in the administrative section of the product if we have a look at the fields there are different types of fields free text fields fields, free text fields with multiple lines, date fields, really complex fields like this one here, the classification that has a list of checkboxes. These are all things that you can build into the system and you can add new fields whenever you like from the administration section. Now in order to show you how the administration section matches what we're seeing here, what I've done is I've got two browsers open. The one on the right is the administration section. The one on the left is what we were looking at a moment ago. So this is actually an incident document in draft status. What we're going to do here is just very quickly have a look at an incident document from the perspective of an administrator who can add new fields. Now I was saying that you can add new fields whenever you like. The way to go about adding fields into any section on the document is simply to go and drag them. So you can pick up a field, you can put it wherever you like, fill in the, the information, and when you're finished, save the documents. The field that you've created is now available to you to use in future incident reports. You can also drag fields around, hold your mouse over them, put them somewhere else. Again, save the document. So this functionality is really quite intuitive, not really that difficult at all. And an administrator with basic level of IT 
would be able to perform these functions. Now, I mentioned previously that the information in the view, this information here, this is also configurable. And if we go back to our administrative view, we can see on the right that in the record list option, what this does over here is it actually defines what columns appear in this view of incidents. So we're looking at the incident views. This is the information that by default appears when you first open up this module. And here in the administration section is how you define what appears by default. So again, just to reiterate, without getting into too much detail about administration and the manipulation of how the solution looks, just about everything that you see in the product is configurable in the administration section. Notifications when the solution are sent out based on your requirements. Within the Viking solution, you are actually able to configure your own notification, which means you can determine when these actions get sent out and to whom and how. So not only are you able to send out notifications, but you can determine that these notifications have to go out either as an email or as a push notification to a mobile device or both. Last but not least is the fact that when purchasing the Myosh Viking solution, what you also get is the Myosh Viking app. The app is available both online and offline, and the functionality that you get on the app is determined by the level of access that you've been given to the solution in the first place. So if as a person using the solution, you have been given very limited access and can only say, log an incident, log an action, and log a hazard, not much else, that is all that you'll be able to do on the app as well. The app enables you to do things like inspections online, it enables you, and offline, it enables you to take photographs, send those photographs through. And if you happen to be working offline, you can do all of this work and later on reconnect to the internet and resynchronize all of your information with the server. I hope that gives you a good overall view of what Myosh does. A lot of the detail that I've spoken about will be covered later on in future videos. Until then.